After studying this module, you shall be able to know about Julian Root Rotter's social learning theory, learn the difference between internal and external locus of control, identify the factors leading to maladaptive behavior, evaluate Rotter's research in the light of current development, analyze the role of different components in general and specific behavior patterns. Julian Rotter developed a social learning theory of personality based on the principles of learning. The basic assumption underlying this theory is that most behavior are learned and are acquired through one's experience with other people. Rotter emphasized that cognitive factors play a role in determining how people react to environmental forces. Hence, his theory may be also called as cognitive social learning theory which suggest that one's expectation of future events are major determinants of behavior. As an interactionist, Rotter emphasized understanding the interaction of people with their meaningful environment as the best predictor of human behavior. He believed that the environment or the individual alone are not completely responsible for behavior. Rather, it is people's cognition past histories and expectations of future that play a role in predicting behavior. Biographical Sketch Julian Rotter was born in Brooklyn, New York on October 22, 1916. He was the third child and oldest son to his parents, who were Jewish immigrants. His family was affected by the Great Depression in the 1930s and his father lost his wholesale stationery business to unemployment. That is when Rotter realized that the influence of situational factors on human behavior. Rotter was an avid reader and was greatly influenced by Adler and Freud. He came to know Adler personally and attended meetings of the Society for Individual Psychology. He was also greatly impressed by Kurt Lewin's field theory approach, which emphasized that behavior is interrelated and suggested that a number of factors are responsible for a behavior to occur. He completed his BA from Brooklyn College in 1937 and his MA from University of Huawa in 1938. He did his PhD in clinical psychology from Indiana University in 1941. That same year, Rotter joined Norwich State Hospital in Connecticut as a clinical psychologist and trained interns and assistants. During the World War II, he worked as an army psychologist for more than three years. After the war, Rotter took a job at Ohio State University where he met many outstanding graduate students including Walter Michel. Here, Rotter published one of his well-known work Social Learning and Clinical Psychology, 1954. In 1963, he joined University of Connecticut as a director of clinical training program till 1987, when he retired as a professor emeritus. Some of the Rotter's most important publications are Application of a Social Learning Theory of Personality, with J. E. Chance and E. J. Frace, 1972, Personality with D. J. Hockrick, 1975, The Development and Application of Social Learning Theory, Selected Papers, 1982, The Rotter Incomplete Sentence Blank, 1966, and Interpersonal Trust Scale, 1967. Rotters has also served as the president of the Eastern Psychological Association and as president of divisions of social and personality psychology and clinical psychology of the American Psychological Association. Social Learning Theory Rotters' social learning theory attempts to predict human behavior on the basis of five assumptions. First, human beings interact with their meaningful environment which means the meaning people attach to an event is an important determinant of how they will react to environmental stimuli. Rotter believed that human behavior arises from an interaction of environmental as well as personal factors. For example, any kind of reinforcement attains 
meaning according to an individual's personal needs or traits and also by external stimuli operating in that situation. Thus, both factors account for the behavior in a particular situation. Second, human personality is learned. This means that personality is not fixed at any particular age of development, but it can be modified or changed through learning. In other words, the accumulation of past experiences give rise to a stable personality. Yet, one can always change by exposure to new experiences. Third, personality has a basic unity or interdependence. This means that people have relatively stable personalities. They learn to evaluate new experiences on the basis of past experiences or interaction that were reinforced. This leads to a consistent evaluation and provide a greater stability to one's personality. For example, a student may refuse to accept helpful advice from a college counselor because she had been consistently given poor advice by other counselors in the past. Fourth, motivation is goal-directed. Rotter assumed that most behaviors are motivated or goal-directed. Thus, human behavior can be explained by assuming that people expect that their actions advances them towards particular goals. This is in line with the empirical law of effect which suggests that people strive to maximize rewards and minimize punishments. Generally, people are strongly reinforced by behavior that takes them toward their desired goal. People are capable of anticipating events, predicting specific behaviors. The social learning approach to predict human behavior in specific situation is based on four concepts or variables. First, behavior potential. It is the likelihood that a particular behavior will occur in the given situation. Second, expectancy. It is the cognition or belief about some property of an object as reinforcing. Third, reinforcement value. It is an individual's preference for a particular type of reinforcement if all possible reinforcements have the same probability of occurrence. Psychological situation is the last. It refers to a complex set of interacting cues that define an individual's perception of a given situation. Next, behavioral potential. Behavioral potential is the probability that a particular response will occur under specific environmental conditions as a given time. Many behavior potentials with varying degree of intensity exist in any given psychological situation. Some behaviors may have zero BP, some behaviors may be very likely to occur and some behaviors lie between the two extremes. For example, as Radha walks towards a restaurant, there are several possibilities and behavior potentials that she might overlook it, stop by, order food, think about robbing the cashier, etc. The behavior potential in any given situation is a function of expectancy as well as the reinforcement value. Thus, a particular behavior potential will be activated if it has greater likelihood to occur in the given situation and if it provides positive reinforcement. Next, we talk about expectancy. Expectancy refers an individual's expectation that a particular reinforcement or a group of reinforcement will occur in a given situation. Expectancies vary from 0 to 100% and can be modified by experience. Expectancies can be of two types. First, generalized expectancy. It is learned from the past experience with a specific response or responses similar to that particular response. It affirms that a particular behavior will be followed by a positive or negative reinforcement. For example, a student may have a generalized expectancy that academic hard work will be rewarded with good grades 
as this had been the case in the past. Specific expectancy. It is the expectancy specific to a given situation. For example, a student who has been getting poor grades in French may believe that his hard work in French may go unrewarded. Thus, he may not study French but put his time and efforts in other subjects. The amount of effort people put in to achieve their goal is determined by the total expectancy, which is a function of both generalized and specific expectancy. For example, a person with high total expectancy for success in a particular job will put in more efforts to achieve targets and will not give up in the face of challenges. Reinforcement value. Reinforcement value refers to the preference that an individual attaches to a particular reinforcement when all possible reinforcements in the given situation have an equal probability of occurrence. In other words, it is the importance attached to different activities. For example, a child may refer reading a novel than going out and playing with friends. The factors that determine the reinforcement value for any given situations are internal reinforcement. It is the individual's perception of the positive or negative value attached to an event. Second, external reinforcement. It is the value placed by one's society or culture to specific events, actions or conditions. Generally, the reinforcement value attached to a specific event increases if it satisfies a strong need. Reinforcement, reinforcement sequences. People can use cognitive processes to anticipate whether a given sequence of events will lead to a desired goal, which contributes to the RV of each event in the sequence of the events. Psychological situations. Rotter defined the psychological situation as a complex set of interacting cues acting upon an individual at a given time period. It can be seen as the part of the internal and external world to which a person responds. Behavior results from an interaction of a person with his or her meaningful environment. Thus, both dispositional and situational influences are emphasized. For example, a person with a strong aggressive tendencies may not behave aggressively in a situation where there is a fear of being evaluated or punished. On the basis of complex cues operating in a specific situation, an individual may develop expectancies for behavior reinforcement sequences as well as for reinforcement reinforcement sequences. Hence the expectancy and the reinforcement value must be considered in addition to the psychological situation to determine the probability of a particular behavior. Basic prediction formula. Rotter proposed a basic formula to predict behavior in specific situations that includes all four variables. The formula represents an idealistic means of predicting behavior potential. BP XL SL RA is equal to function of E XL RA SL plus RV ASL. The formula can be read as follows. The potential that behavior X will occur in situation 1 in relation to a given reinforcement A is a function of the expectancy that the given behavior X will be followed by a reinforcement A in a situation 1 and the value attached to reinforcement A in situation 1. For example, the likelihood or behavior potential that is called BP that a student will put her head down and go to sleep that is behavior X during a dull and boring lecture class situation 1 is given by her expectations. E that his or her behavior will lead to sleep that is reinforcement A in the given classroom situation S1 plus a measure of how much is sleep valued or desired that is RVA in the given situation. Predicting general behaviors. 
the basic prediction formula permits prediction of behavior in specific situations. Given all the necessary information pertaining to the four variables is available. It is suitable for the prediction in controlled laboratory experiments. For predicting general everyday behavior, Rotter introduced the general prediction formula which is based on the following concept. Generalized expectancy. It can be used to predict how a person will react to situations generally. For example, an aggressive person is expected to behave aggressively in most situations given the need operating in that situation. However, in a specific situation, the same person may behave in a non-aggressively manner which can be predicted by the basic prediction formula. Second concept is needs. According to Rotter, needs are any behavior or sets of behavior which direct the individual towards a goal. There are six broad categories of need, each one of which represents a group of functionally related behaviors or behaviors that lead to similar reinforcements. These are recognition, status, dominance, independence, protection, dependency, love and affection, and physical comfort. Need component. A need complex has three major components, need potential, freedom of movement and need value which are analogous to BP, E and RV. Now we will talk about need potential. Need potential refers to the likelihood of occurrence of a set of functionally related behaviors which are directed towards satisfying similar goals. Need potential can be measured by direct observation because people engaging in the same behavior for example eating in a particular restaurant may have a different needs example physical comfort recognition etc and freedom of movement freedom of movement freedom of movement can be defined as an individual's overall expectation of being reinforced by performing behaviors which are directed towards satisfying a general need it is the average or mean expectancy that a set of behavior will lead to a desired level of satisfaction of a given need. It can be measured by keeping need value constant and observing one's need potential. Now need value. Need value of an individual is the degree to which he or she prefers a given set of reinforcements to another. It can be measured by holding FM constant for obtaining positive reinforcements by observing behaviors aimed at satisfaction of the most desired needs. General prediction formula. Rotter introduced the general prediction formula to make generalized predictions of a set of behavior which are performed to satisfy a specific need. That is NP equal to function of FM plus NV. The formula suggests that need potential is the function of freedom of movement and need value. For example, the probability that the student will rest her head on the desk and sleep during a given boring lecture that is need potential is determined by the value placed on particular need like recognition status that is NV and the expectancy of being reinforced by performing the said behavior that is FM. Hence the fact of that one's past experiences form a guideline of one's expectance of any kind of reinforcement forms the crux of general prediction formula. Personality development. Rotter believed that humans were majorly influenced by their environment. However, due to regular interaction of one with his or her environment, he she is able to draw connection between the behavior exhibited and the reinforcement following that behavior. This cognitive activity leads them to attach a cause and effect for their behavior. Based on how much an individual relies on such environmental cues, Rotter proposed the concept of locus of control. Locus of control. Locus of control is basically the extent to which an individual feels that he she has control over their life's outcome. 
A locus of control orientation is the belief that whether the outcomes of one's action are contingent on what one does, internal orientation or an events outside one's personal control, external orientation. Based on one's locus of control, an individual exhibits certain characteristics. First, we'll talk about external locus of control. It is when an individual believes that his her behavior is guided by external agents of the world such as fate, luck, chances or other circumstances. They believe that there is no connection between their behavior and the reinforcement provided. Consequently, they rely more on external factors such as task difficulty in explaining their failure. Those with an external locus of control are generally less focused and are not much goal directed since they believe that more than themselves external agents like luck etc contributes towards success of their life. Such individuals usually lack autonomy and are unenterprising in their outlook. Now we'll talk about internal locus of control. It is when an individual believes that his her behavior is guided by own personal decisions and efforts. They believe that there any kind of reinforcement is exercised only when they display their skills that is it follows as an effect to their behavior. As a result they experience more guilt and shame when they suffer defeat. Those with an internal locus of control are more focused and efficient in learning rules for problem solving so that they can devise strategies to cope with and control outcomes. Such individuals have a high sense of autonomy and are more confident and independent and assertive in their lives. Hence, locus of control is unidirectional continuum with external locus of control one at one end while internal locus of control at the other end. By failing on either of the two extreme is undesirable. This is because an individual who is on the extremes of the external locus of control is likely to feel a sense of despair since he or she feels that they cannot change any situation through their own efforts. This can also lead to a feeling of helplessness and empathy. Whereas someone who is on the extreme that is has an unusually high sense of internal locus of control will tend to indiscriminately blame himself or herself for a failure beyond their own control. Additionally, if someone has an internal locus of control but lacks self-efficacy or opportunities, the person would most likely experience high amount of guilt and lack of control over situation. Such circumstances can lead to development of depression, neurotic anxiety, etc. Therefore, a healthy and balanced individual is one who is in between two scales with slightly more inclination towards internal locus of control. Now we'll talk about the next concept which is interpersonal trust. Another concept utilizing principle of generalized expectancy is interpersonal trust. Interpersonal trust is defined as a generalized expectancy held by an individual that the word, promise, oral or written statement of another individual or group can be relied on. Rotter saw interpersonal trust as a belief in the communication of other when there is no evidence for disbelieving. He felt that the other people in the environment exert an influence in one's life by offering us rewards and punishment. As a result, an individual starts developing cognitive linkage and hence some generalized expectancies about the type of reinforcement that are likely to follow from verbal promise or threat made by others. These promises are sometimes kept and sometimes broken. Due to repeated experiences of this kind, an individual develops a sense of judgment and learns to trust or distrust the world of others. 
the person with high interpersonal trust has the following characteristics. Such individuals are less likely to lie, less likely to steal or cheat, more likely to give others a second chance, more likely to respect the right of others, less likely to be unhappy, conflicted or maladjusted, more likable and popular, more trustworthy, neither more or less gullible, neither more or less intelligent. Thus, a person with high interpersonal trust possesses traits that are desirable in an individual and therefore is regarded as a positive personality trait. Now we will talk about maladaptive behavior. Rotter defines maladaptive behavior as any persistent behavior that fails to move a person closer to a desired goal. It arises from the combination of high need value and low freedom of movement. High need value. Such circumstances arises when one sets goals that are unrealistically high in relation to one's ability to achieve them. Low freedom of movement. Such situation arise when either a person lacks the opportunity to perform a behavior that can be followed by positive reinforcement or one applies low expectancies for success in one area to other so that they perceive themselves to be worthless. Subsequently, such individuals are unable to obtain gratification that they desire. As a result, they start learning how to avoid or defend themselves against actual or anticipated failure instead of learning how to achieve their goal. Evaluation Contributions Internal external scale It is a scale that attempts to measure the degree to which people perceive a causal relationship between their own efforts and environmental consequences. It consists of 29 forced choice items, 23 pairs of which are scored and 6 of which are filler items designed to disguise the purpose of the scale. Interpersonal Trust Scale It was developed in 1967. It is a scale with 25 items that assesses interpersonal trust and 15 filler items to conceal the nature of the instrument. The scale is scored on a 5 point gradation from strongly agree to strongly disagree. Modifying Psychotherapy Rotter implemented a problem solving approach to psychotherapy such that the patient's orientation towards life changes. He defined the role of a therapist and gave guidelines to accomplish therapeutic goals. Thus, Rotter's theory has a strong applied value since it is used in clinical psychology for diagnosis of deviant behavior and etc. and in the physical health as well. Furthermore, the theory is highly comprehensive with its roots in both clinical and experimental setup as well as precise and testable due to well-defined concepts and hypotheses. Now there are some criticism as well. First is parisomony. Rotter's position seems fairly parisomonious in attempts to account for performances by individuals who differ in the locus of control orientations. Thus, the picture is unsettled. Second, empirical validity. Although evidence for IE concept is strong, but rest of the Rotter's theory lacks empirical evidence and largely remains shallow. Generalized prediction. The IE scale can be used only for predicting generalized behavior and can't lead to more accurate predictions. Now, the summary of personality theories. Julian Rotter's social learning theory proposes that human behavior is influenced by his, her environment and based on one's experience with the environment, he, she develops expectations of particular outcomes for every action. He believed that human behavior can be predicted in specific situations since it is guided by four basic principles, behavior potential, expectancy, reinforcement value and psychological situations. 
using these four four principles, Rotters had developed a basic prediction formula. Another formula was proposed for predicting general behavior for an individual, which is influenced by need value and freedom of movement. Rotters introduced the phenomena of locus of control and interpersonal trust and displayed their role in the development of well-adjusted individuals. A small body of research has been generated by Rotter's theory which is widely being used in various domains such as clinical psychology, psychopathology and physical health.